Hello everyone, welcome to our video. In this video, we are going to talk about column bases. So we are going to talk about basically what is column bases, what are the different types of column bases, and what is the different function and design posture of column base. So as you can basically see over here, column bases transmit the as, as you can see over the first point, column bases transmit the column load to the concrete or machinery or foundation blocks. And the column base spreads the load on the wider area so that the intensity of the bearing pressure on the foundation block is within the bearing pressure, within the bearing pressure. and there are basically two types of column bases. So in order to explain both of these points, so as you can see here, we have our first type of column base, which is our slab base. So as you can see, this is our slab base. So after we have learned regarding the design of column, we move on to our design of column base. So as you can see here, this is going to be my my column base. So as you can see, this is my column and uh, it is transferring certain load P, certain load P. But as you can, uh, but as we know, the design strength or the design strength of strength of our uh, RCC foundation and strength of our column is so steel. It is going to be different for both of these. So as you can see, steel can bear more load. So let's say our column, uh, let's say our steel column uh, is can bear load up to thousand kilonewton, up to thousand kilonewton. And right now we are acting, let's say a load of six hundred kilonewton, six hundred. 600 kilonewton, but our RC foundation might not be able to handle up to 600 kilonewton of forces. So our RC foundation might be able to handle just let's say 300 or 400 kilonewton uh, kilonewton uh, per meter of load. So in such case, what basically happens is, so as you can see here, we will not we'll not be connecting the steel column directly to our steel foundation. So this is our steel column. And we are not going to connect the steel column directly to our RCC foundation. So instead, what we are going to do is we are going to provide a certain base. We are going to provide a certain steel base. As you can see with this blue section, I am, I am highlighting my steel uh, steel base. So we are going to provide a certain steel uh, steel base in between the steel uh, in between our steel column and in between our RCC foundation, so that we can uh, transfer the load safely. So as you can see uh, see my second point. The column base spreads the load on so the column base spreads the load on wider area so that the intensity of the bearing pressure on the foundation block is within the bearing strength. So basically, we'll be providing the uh, we'll be providing our column bases to ensure that our RC foundation will not break due to the high amount of load uh, being transferred through our steel column. So basically, in order to ensure the load pass. Uh, it, in order to pass the load safely from our steel column to our RCC foundation, we'll be using our base plate. So this is going to be a steel base, and right now we are going to design our column base. Layer. So designing basically means finding out the dimensions and width, finding out the dimensions and the thickness. So now looking upon the types of column base, we have two types: slab base and gusset base. So our first example is going to be our slab base. So what is uh, so what basically is slab base. So slab base are basically they are used in columns carrying small loads. So as you can see over here, they are used in columns carrying small loads. Uh, the column is directly connected to the base plate through plate angles. So as you can see we have our column over here and it is connected to our base plate. So it's going to be my base plate and it is connected through cleat angle and the load is transferred to the blade through bearing. So what is cleat angle? So I have open a tab over here. As you can see here, cleat angle is such metallic structure. As you can see here, it is such type of metallic structure which are uh, basically used to uh, which are basically used for connection. So as you can see over here is our column and through our plot uh, through our cleat angle and we're going to provide uh, we're going to provide we are going to provide bolting over here. So as you can see, bolting is provided over here. And basically, we are uh, we are use there we are using it to connect our column and our base plate. So now basically, you can see over here our base plate and our RCC foundation is connected to our anchor anchor plate. So as you can see, we have got our anchor block over here. And the so as you can see over here, I have anchor bolt as well. So an anchor bolt are basically this type of structure as you can see from this figure. And while See, as you can see again from this figure, it's going to be a bit more clear. So, we have our column over here, and we have our base plate over here, and this is going to be our gusset plate. So, our gusset plate is our second type. So, our gusset piece is our second type. So, we'll be talking about gusset plate in our second type. So, first, we talk about first type. We have our column. So, we have our RC foundation, and as you can see here, uh, in this side, uh, in this Type we are talking about gusset plate. So let me just explain from this figure only. So we have our cleat angle and 
basically this is going to be my anchor bolt and this is my top view of anchor bolt so you can just see bold but when you are seeing uh, from the front view as you can see it is oak type structure so right now in this figure when you are moving downward it is going to be this oak type of structure which is going to be your anchor plate this is going to be my top view as you can see this is my, uh, this is my RCC foundation and in the top of my RCC foundation I have my base plate which is my slab base right now this is my slab base this, and this is my column so as you can see this is my this is my column while seeing from the top view and uh, top view and this is our plate angle this is my base plate this is my RCC foundation so basically this is not a uh, much complex steel over it. this is quite uh, simple uh, so basically firstly we learned about our learned about our first type which is our slab base where which is basically used for columns carrying small loads and it is directly connected to the base plate using our plate angle so plate angles are such structures which are used to connect our columns and then our base plate now moving into our second uh, types of column base we have our gusseted base so in order to see our gusseted base the gusseted base are used for columns which carry heavy loads and the columns is connected to base plate through gussets so, so in this case we are going to be using a uh, gussets and now the load is transferred to the base partially partially through bearing and partially through gussets so as you can see in our uh, slab base the whole the load was transferred uh, directly through bearing but in this case we are going to transfer the load through partially through bearing and partially through gusset so what is gusset what is this uh, what is the load transfer mechanism uh, for our gusset base so we will look out here we have our column then we have our gusset plate over here and then we have our cleat angle as well which is used to connect our column and our base plate and then we have then here we have our anchor bolt connecting it to uh, connecting our base plate to our RCC foundation so what basically is our um, gusseted plate so let me show this figure now as you can see this figure we have shown the gusseted plate gusseted plate is also on structure similar to that of uh, similar to that of uh, cleat angle so basically cleat angle was used to was uh, used to connect our different members so basically uh, gusseted plate is also used to connect our members in uh, this way as you can see over there so basically we have seen our gusseted plate uh, is provided in between our column and it is and it, and it is and uh, so our gusset plate is basically connecting our column to our base plate so as you can see we have our base plate right over here this is our my column and uh, basically gusset plate is used when i have to connect uh, when i have to uh, connect my members when we have to connect our two or different members together in such case we will be using our gusset plate so as you can see basically our vertical column is, is connected to our horizontal base plate with the help of this gusset place from this figure so basically this is my this structure as you can see this structure is my gusset place this is my cleat angle right over it and this uh, and with the mechanism or uh, mechanism of uh, bolts gusset plate and cleat angle or gusset angle we have connected our column structure to our base plate and our base plate is ultimately connected to our connected to our uh, rcc column base through this anchor bolt so as you can see from our second plate uh, in this uh, gusset base, uh, our the load is transferred to the base partially through bearing and partially through gusset. So this gusset plate, as you can see, this gusset plate from our front view. So as you can see, this gusset plate when we are seeing from our front view, we are going to see it, see it in uh, this. Uh, we are going to see it in this shape. So our gusset plate is uh, basically uh, helping in our load transfer as well. So as you can see, the load base transferred through our gauss plate uh, gauss plate as well ultimately through our ultimately to our base plate and ultimately to our foundation so this is our side view so it is same it is not uh, much different so basically now we have seen our plant as well so this is our gusset plate our base plate our column as you can see over here we have our gusset plate right over here we have our base plate our uh, base plate and some rcc foundation and these are our different bolts so as you can see again, again from this figure so from the isometric view it is quite clear how we have uh, used our place our place our gusset plate our uh, gusset plate in order to join our structure so basically gusset uh, gusset plate is also our structure similar to that of our so as you can see in this figure a little bit so this is my uh, our gusset plate will be used in structure like this when we have to connect uh, when we have to connect so as you can see let me just uh, source maybe let me just show you what gusset plate you can see gusset plate images so gusset plate is also a structure similar to that of our similar to uh, similar to of our plate angle so gusset plate uh, simply as you can see over here 
from this figure as you can see you can be clear so gossip plate is basically this kind of structure we have our four members connected connected over four wood members four four members which can see only from this picture so this is our, our gossip plate which is going to connect our four different structures together so as you can see from uh, again from this structure so this is basically our gossip plate which is going to uh, gossip plate which is connecting our four uh, so here in this uh, case five different structures uh, which are in different alignment or different directions for uh, different direction through our bolt so in this same case our column is connected to our uh, base plate through this gossip plate so hopefully we are uh, clear over here so basically this was the basics of column base why we need column base or different types of column base and how the load transfer is uh, done through the column through the base plate using our uh, using our cleat angle uh, using our cleat angle and anchor bolt for our slab base while in our gusset plates there is an extra of gusset plates so basically the, there is going to be extra load in our gusset base as you can see our heavy loads so in order to make the structure doesn't fail in order to ensure the safety of the structure we are going to be using our gusset plate to connect our structures together so now moving on to our design of slab base so we are going to be uh, moving on to section 7.4 is 800.2007 so we are going to be using this section of uh, this section of course section 7.4 is uh, 800.2007 so now we have a second point the uh, design of the design of slab base consists in finding the size and thickness of Slab base. So I have already explained before. So in order to in order to design the slab base, we are basically going to find the size, length, breadth, and thickness of slab base. So size of so since this is my design the procedure, we are going to move it on step one and one, two, three, uh, one by one. So firstly, let's see size of base plate. So firstly, we need to find out the bearing strength of concrete. So our bearing strength of concrete is 0.45 FCK. So in our code, it allows up to 0.6 FCK. But in order to be in safety, uh, safety side, we'll be using 0.45 FCK only. So this is my code IS800.2007. I have already uh, downloaded uh, this code. So we'll be, uh, so as you can see, we'll be using uh, this code. So yeah. Uh, so we'll be using uh, this uh, section of code, and uh, in the section of code, we can uh, find uh, we can find that it is mentioned uh, to use up to 0 0.6 a uh, FCK of concrete, but uh, FCK strength of concrete, but we'll be utilizing only up to 0 0.45 uh, 45 FCK in order to be in the safe side. Next, we'll be finding out the our area of base plate. Our area of base plate will be PU divided by 0 0.45 FCK. 0 0.45 FCK is our bearing strength of concrete. So right now here PU PU is the factor load on column. So we need to uh, we need to find out the factor load. We are not going to be dealing with the uh, uh, working loads. In order to uh, so if we are on working load, we are going to multiply it by 1.5 to find our factor load. So now we are going to select the size of the base plate. So now for economy as far as possible, keep the position on all sides equal. So that's basically the position. Let me show you. This is going to be my RCC. Yeah, this is going to be my uh, base plate. This is my steel column. So my base position is the distance from the column up to this up to this base plate. So we are going to be so right now I am taking this distance as B while this distance as A. So while calculating our sections in order to make it equal economical, we will be taking all the position as equal, which means A equals to B. So this distance, this distance, and all this distance they need to be equal to is or the R. So now, uh, now we need to find out our thickness. So basically, we have find out our after calculating our area, we'll be, we'll be able to find out our length and breadth. So next, we are going to find out the thickness of plate. So in order to find out the thickness of plate, mostly we need to calculate the intensity of pressure. Intensity of pressure basically uh, refers to the uh, refers to the pressure which is uh, uh, being exerted on this uh, base plate. So in order to find out the intensity of pressure, we need to divide our load PU divided by area of base plate. So area of base plate is basically the New area which will be find which we will find out uh, after calculating A and B. This is design procedure will be more clear when we do doing our uh, numerical problem one, which is in our playlist, which is our next video. So do check out to have a clear uh, instruction regarding uh, the design procedure with reference to our example. Next, we'll be having the minimum thickness. Minimum thickness is given by T S equals to 2.5 W. So basically, now we'll be moving on to our code. So as you can see uh, now, right now, so we don't need to remember all those formula. If you move on to our section seven point uh, six, I think. So we have our list columns over here. So 
So basically, we uh, when we move on to our, as you can see, I have written it over here. I think section seven point four. So let's move on to our section seven point four. This is seven point five. So right now here it is. So here is my formula. T S equals to 2.5 W so we need the formula inverse formula if we move on to 7.4.7.4.3.1 uh, is in page number 47 of your code book so you can find this formula which we are going to be using over here ts equals to uh, 2.5 w e square minus uh, 0.3 b square gamma m naught divided by f i greater than tf so so basically what are these for what are uh, so basically let me show you what does it refer to so as you can see over here, W refers to the uniform pressure from below on the slab base. So W is basically my uh, W is basically going to be intensity of pressure. Intensity of pressure. This, this is my small W. And next we have A and B. A and B are they are the basically our position as I explained before. A and B and A and B are going to be equal and divided by gamma m naught divided by F y. So F y is a so Fy is basically uh, Fy gamma m naught and this needs to be greater than equal to Tf. So Tf is a flange thickness of compression member. So what is flange thickness of compression member means it refers it basically refers to the thickness. It refers to our uh, it refers to our flange thickness of our compression member means it, it is the flange thickness of our steel member. So you can see here this is my steel member. Steel member. So basically my Calculated TS needs to be greater than uh, needs, to, needs to be greater than uh, TF. So as you can see from our numerical one, so we uh, will have our value of TF as 10.6 mm. Uh, so from our code book or from our handbook, we can have this uh, value as 10. Point, uh, as 10.6 mm. So basically, this is uh, this part. This part is my flange. While well, this part this part is my flange thickness. This is going to be as Tf and my calculated value of Ts. Ts of my rectangular slab base must be greater than or equal to Tf. If my value of Ts is less say less than Tf, in that case I am going to take my value of Ts as equal to Tf. So this will be more clear when we will be doing our problem one. So moving on uh, now we have uh, and we have gamma m naught. Gamma m naught is our design strain. So we can find the value of Different value of partial safety factors from from our page number thirty, table number five. So let's move on to page number thirty. As you can see from our page number thirty, sorry, page number thirty. So not page number thirty. Now I think it's different over there. So let me move on to my section five. Uh, sorry, this is the code book page number thirty. 24, 25. Let's move on to my page number 30, right over here. As you can see, page number 30. So we have our different values of gamma and B. So we have our value of gamma m naught as resistance uh, governed by Bockley is 1.10. So we're going to take the value of our gamma m naught as 1. Point, this, this is my table 5, page number 30. Table 5, page number 30 of your code book. And now moving on to our connections. So basically, we have to connect after designing our base plate. We need to connect our base plate to the foundation concrete. So, in that case, our connections are going to be complete to use. So, in order to connect the base plate to the foundation concrete, we are going to use we can we are basically be going to be using our 420 mm diameter and 30 mm long anchor bolts. 420 mm diameter bolts and 30 mm long anchor bolts. Or if a bolted origin is to be used, in that case, we are, we are going to connect column to the base plate using two ISA 6565 6 mm thick angles with 20 mm bolts. This is our standard, we can remember them. But in the case if weld is to be used for pointing on the base, we are going to check the weld length of fillet lengths. And uh, regarding this connection number 3, it's going to be explained through our problem 1. So hopefully you have understood the basics regarding the column base, how the design of the, of the column base is to be uh, is going to be done, what are the different procedure, procedure. and it's going to be more clear when we are going to solve our problem 1, which is going to be our next video. So hopefully if you like our content, do like the video, do subscribe the channel and if you want to help us, you can see the comment, uh, you can see the pinned comment, how you can how you can help our channel. So hopefully you have understood our content, if you have any queries, you can comment down below. Thank you.